This episode was sponsored by Squarespace. Of the six base stats in the game, stealth is perhaps the hardest one to optimize. Mastering stealth can open up countless new options in gameplay. It allows builds with low HP to avoid potentially game-ending encounters. It allows builds with lower mobility to get in range of players that could easily outspeed them. And it can enable DPS mains to strike before a tank player has the chance to raise their defenses. Stealth functions as one of the few counters to team strategies too, because if the target's teammates don't notice a problem, they won't come to the aid of their ally. So today, instead of talking about a specific build, server, or past game expansion, I'll talk about a general overview of the stealth strategies at various stat levels. The stealth stat is simply a measure of how difficult it is for other players to detect you in-game. At a low level, even players with no perception-based abilities will detect you even at a distance, while at a high level, even players with rare perception abilities might not detect you at all. Keep in mind that stealth is not limited to sight, but consider smell and sound as well. So let's start with the lowest stealth levels. Believe it or not, it's actually kinda hard to achieve a rating this low. You have to deliberately choose skins or palette swaps that stand out from your surroundings. A rating this low can also be achieved by specking into odor-based moves, like Skunk Spray. Having extremely low stealth can actually be a viable strategy for some builds. Poison is generally seen as a low-tier strategy, because it requires the user to take potentially fatal damage in order to actually activate its effect. But when used in combination with extremely bright colors, predators will realize that they should leave you alone without attacking first. Specking into both poison and aesthetics costs a lot of evolution points though, so one other option is to only spec into bright colors and not actually put any points into poison. The bright colors will still ward off players unwilling to risk their entire playthrough over one elimination, and this lets you invest those points into other abilities. Above this level you start to see builds that don't necessarily try to be seen, but can't really hide their presence due to some of the attributes their character has, such as just being really massive. Even if they did invest into stealth abilities like camouflage, it wouldn't do enough to keep them hidden, so they end up sticking with basic color palettes and relying on other strategies to protect themselves. At this level you can also find builds that use camouflage, but don't get much benefit out of it simply because they have too strong an odor to hide. A little higher than this and you have your basic color camouflage. This is the most common strategy in the current meta, simply because it doesn't cost much to spec into. It's surprisingly effective as long as the user keeps still and doesn't make any noise, although it requires you to keep to the areas that match your color in order to get the stealth bonus. Many of the game's most popular builds opt for this style, saving the bulk of their evolution points for other perks. One more step up and you reach patterns. This is the first form of advanced camouflage and offers two main advantages. First, it grants a massive stealth bonus if your pattern matches your surroundings exactly. But second, and perhaps more importantly, it breaks up your character's outline, meaning that even if an enemy player detects you, their attacks get an accuracy penalty, as it's difficult to tell where the player's hurt box ends and their surroundings begin. One of the most common patterns is Stripes, a pattern so effective that the most powerful stealth power hybrid in the game uses it. Above patterns you have Textures. This is the highest possible level of stealth you can achieve using basic camouflage. As long as you aren't moving, enemies will be totally unable to detect you, as long as you remain near the scenery that your build is designed to match. Reaching this level of stealth requires a huge amount of evolution points spent on modifying aesthetics. But believe it or not, we can go even higher. Texture is the highest level of advanced camouflage, but stealth goes far beyond that. Being able to hide while standing still is one thing, but the best stealth abilities work even on the move. Not getting detected while moving is difficult, and the most common strategy players use is to wait for the global stealth bonus that occurs every night. But while that inhibits sight-based detection, there's still the problem of being detected by sound. This is where abilities that allow the user to move silently come in handy, like the owl's special sound-reducing feathers, or the cushion pads of a leopard. Using abilities like this in combination with camouflage can really take your stealth gameplay to the next level. But to really reach the top stealth level, you need camouflage that can function no matter which environment you're in. Several fish, frogs, and reptiles can change color, sometimes as a means of communication and sometimes for stealth purposes. But the absolute best stealth ability in the history of the game is the cephalopods ability to change not only their color, but also their shape and texture. This lets them match literally any surface in the ocean, giving them the maximum stealth rating achievable in the entire game. They also have the Ink Cloud ability that can be used in a pinch to drop their opponent's accuracy to zero for a short time. With all these options available to players, it might seem like stealth is overpowered. So let me explain some of the potential counterplay options you can use in order to deal with stealth. 
the most common anti-stealth ability players use on both offense and defense is Smell. Smell is very difficult to mask and can give your presence away long before a player can see or hear you. In fact, if you invest enough evolution points into Smell, you can track someone for massive distances all the way across the map, regardless of their stealth abilities. However, there are many other options to deal with stealth strategies employed by your opponents. Many vertebrate builds come pre-equipped with the Tapetim ability, which allows them to see through darkness or deep sea much more effectively. Pit Vipers have the Infrared Sight ability, which completely negates the stealth abilities of any build that's part of the Warm-Blooded faction, making them extremely effective in the matchup. But the two most overpowered anti-stealth abilities are Echolocation and Electroreception, shared by the ocean's two top tiers, Cetaceans and Sharks respectively. Both of these abilities render stealth attempts completely useless and help balance the meta, to give conventional defense strategies like Spikes and Venom more of a purpose. Anyways, I hope the strategy guide helps some of you. I know stealth is a tough game mechanic to master, but if you design your build well enough, it becomes a lot more manageable. Another thing you can design in a more manageable way is your very own website, using today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you're looking to create a website but don't know where to start, Squarespace has you covered. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. Squarespace enables you to create beautiful websites that can showcase your work, sell products and services of all kinds, promote your business, and much more. Whatever you want to make online, make it with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com slash tierzoo for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code tierzoo to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, as well as those of you who support me via Patreon. Thanks again for watching, and good luck out there.